It's Jeff and Wilmer at Budrum and I'm going to show you how to strengthen a, a weak colony of bees. Now I have here a, a four frame nuke box. What I'll do is turn it upside down and I'll have some newspaper here that I've folded over once and I'm just going to tape this to the bottom of the box. I've got some masking tape here. Tape this nice and secure. Got one here, another one here. I'm going to be taking this on the back of my ute down to the bees, and I don't want this newspaper to get damaged on the way down. So, what I'm going to do is get a cardboard that fits on there. I'm going to tape that also, making sure the tape doesn't go on top of the other tape. Tape that in two places. And that acts as a sort of a wear plate while it's on the back of my ute. And what I'm going to do is mark this tape with a dot. See? Now I know which ones I've got to take off. We're right out of foundation at the moment. By the end of next week we should have a whole heap of fresh foundation. Now one thing you need is a lid with ventilation. Because your bees are going to be locked in there for maybe 12 hours or more before they chew their way through so you need to have this ventilation in the lid. So we're going to go down to the bees. Most of these hives are pretty strong. I'm taking them out of the honey section above the queen excluder. You can take four frames out of one hive or two frames out of two hives or one frame out of four hives. You know, and just combine the whole lot. So, because I haven't got any foundation on those frames I'm going to replace, I'm only going to use one frame out of four hives. There's quite a few bees on that frame. There on that frame, quite a few. <laughs> By taking one frame out of four hives, you're basically not weakening out the hives very much at all. quite a few. This one here has plenty of bees. It's a cranky hive so I won't open that one up. There's plenty of bees on there. Plenty of bees on that one. This lid on. Because I have equal numbers of bees on each frame the bees will call a truce and they won't try and kill each other. You always want to make sure you do this when the weather's good and there's plenty of honey coming in, when they're not on the defensive. If you try to do this when it's rainy or there's a lot of rain coming or rain around, you'll have trouble. They'll fight each other and uh, kill each other. Another little helpful tip for any beekeepers, if you've got an old paintbrush, you just use it to stop your smoker from well someone pulled us up on the road the other day didn't <laughs> yeah, they thinking right. we had a fire on our truck <laughs> yes, right, exactly. they were in a real panic they were in a real panic yeah so I'm just going to take this up now right now we go home now Jeff keeps telling me about these ducks and kangaroos which are not here today but the ducks are and I, this is the first time I've ever seen them when I've come down with him. So I thought they were his imaginary friends, but there they are. Yeah, there's eight today. That's the most I've ever seen, is eight. They're beautiful. We were just driving away and I just noticed that these ducks further up had three little baby ducklings with them and they're just gorgeous so I had to get out of the truck and film them. Oh they're beautiful. So this is a hive here that I want to boost the numbers of. It's a, a flow hive for a lady. It's got a, a queen that's laying fertile eggs and the lady's going to pick it up in a few days time. So you can see by having those dots on there I know which ones to take off. I'm just going to put it in the area where the most bees are, which is 
on this side here now that's sitting on top of there I have this bit of wood here that will cover the other area while they chew their way through the newspaper they can breathe through those breathers the bees on those four frames will give this colony a real boost in numbers at the same time we haven't weakened out those other hives very much at all the main reason for getting the bees from my main bee site is that it's far enough away so the bees won't go back to their original hive I could have used any of these bees here but they'll just go back to their original hive we'll have a look in about this time tomorrow or tomorrow afternoon when I'm going to do the rest of that video for the bees Jeff. as soon as I finish doing this bread this is number seven and the last one just about finished now Jeff. And I've got one more to go after these two put these ones here are we going to have a taste test? Not really, no, we're going to do these bees. <laughs> this is the last one. I think the last one's the best one. Look at that. Oh, it's magnificent. Well over 24 hours since we put these bees here. By looking through this, through the breather, you can see right through to the other breather. And if you can see that, you know that the bees, they've chewed their way through the paper. Otherwise, they'd be trying to get out through the breather. So once you see that it's clear at the top, you know they're through. But you can see on the core flute there's all bits of chewed up paper. Oh yeah, right. And there's probably more uh, on top of the wire. Oh, there's a lot on the ground. And there's no dead bees at the entrance. No. Well, so, we checked earlier and they weren't fighting, were they? No. If you're watching, Katie, this is your hive. This, this time, it is your hive. Can you see it? Yep. So this is Katie's new queen. Oh, she's lovely. So this is the new queen. She's only just started laying. <laughs> and you can see by these cells here that are just capped that they're worker cells. See that? Yes. And there she is up there. Yeah, she's lovely. She's lovely, yeah. Let me see where they chew through the newspaper. And you can see where they've chewed the newspaper. Yeah. I'll just give them a bit of smoke to drive them away from the ledge and we'll close them up okay so that's that oh well thanks for watching we'll catch you later bye bye